the neighborhood revitalization activities, um, what I'm going to do is kind of run through what we've been doing as it relates to the city's strategic plan and then talk a little bit about court enforcement. So we have identified an area of the community, primarily what we would call the central city neighborhoods from an, uh, roughly an area of North Avenue um, and then drew a line basically on 18th Street on the south side. So this red line you see on this map is the boundaries of our five-year plan as it relates to the city's strategic plan. Um, in that plan, we identified the neighborhoods that we're targeting. So the, the neighborhoods on here that are in gray represent the 2017 targeted neighborhoods, and the ones that are in the red or pink represent the 2018 neighborhoods. Um, so the 2018 neighborhoods were Erie Hill, Gateway, Sheridan Park, and Swift. Um, we wouldn't be able to do this without interdepartmental cooperation, so we continue to have uh, bi-monthly meetings of the uh, different departments to identify issues that are arising in neighborhoods. Um, you can see the, the departments that have been in uh, those meetings and involved with the discussions, and we also invite the, land, the Lakeshore Apartment Association, the Landlord Association, to those meetings to uh, give us, we give them 15 minutes in the beginning to talk about any concerns they have. We can share with them things that we're working on, so there's communication between the Landlord Association and the city. Next slide. So what we're doing as part of the um, strategic plan is uh, developing baselines for the neighborhood. So not only are we sending code enforcement officers into those targeted neighborhoods, we're also doing a survey um, and walking parcel by parcel and ranking the condition of the properties. <coughs> Um, we've never done baseline mapping of neighborhoods before, um, so we really don't have a lot of data to see how well we've done and how neighborhoods have progressed over time. So in the targeted neighborhoods, there's a criteria as it relates to the building uh, condition, whether the property has maintenance issues, how the roof is, um, landscaping. So they rank all of those um, different, ent different pieces, and then we map them in GIS, um, which you can see here on the right side of the slide. We map them in GIS with the um, different issues and codes and stuff so that it's, uh, we're developing baselines so that we can go back in the future and see how neighborhoods are doing. So the plan is to circle back to the neighborhoods within the next five years or so and see where, what kind of progress has been made. Next slide. We are also, um, we've instituted some lighting, so we've, we hear a lot of complaints at neighborhood meetings about the darkness of our neighborhoods, especially in the center, central city areas. So um, with the help of the police department and the third shift officers, they have gone out uh, both in 2017 and 2018 and mapped areas that are dark. So the darker the blue on this map, the darker the, the street is. Um, so we then went and identified areas where uh, either th there's a, if there was no light present, we worked with Aligned Energy to have uh, lights installed in those areas, and if there was lights present, then we got them replaced or updated or whatever to identify uh, those issues. So we last year spent about uh, 37000 of block grant dollars putting additional lights in the core central city neighborhoods. If you go to the next slide. So in 2018, 2019, I know this is hard to read, but we went and mapped basically the rest of the, um, looked to survey and map the rest of the central city neighborhoods and the boundary that we're targeting. So um, our goal going forward is to continue to add additional lights in the entire uh, strategic plan area um, so that we can address the concerns of uh, safety at night and, and lights and those types of things. So next slide. Um, we were successful in 2018. Two neighborhoods became associations, the Historic Grant Neighborhood and the Volrath North, North Point Neighborhood Association. And then here's a list of notable neighborhood achievements and events that have happened over the course of the year. Um, everything from signage to historic walks, cleanups is a big thing, um, adopt a family for holidays, a neighborhood planning block parties, um, an aldermatic forum, and then you recently heard about the Adopt-a-Park pilot program. Um, as it relates to the targeted neighborhoods, we then went back in and identified two 
uh, really of the worst areas within the a north and south side neighborhood and two rock the block events in partnership with Habitat for Humanity was held. So in the uh, spring we did the Keeney Court area and you can kind of see the work that was done and the um, outcome of that. And then this past fall in October we did the south side, south, side, south 9th Street area and did a number of projects as well. So this was a way of trying to take those, those, the worst of the worst in that baseline mapping area and trying to bring some fresh uh, new ideas. So that was a very successful uh, partnership with Habitat for Humanity. Next slide. And then we're working with the neighborhood associations to develop, so they all have projects and needs and thoughts and you know, some of them wanna conquer the, the neighborhood and you know, it's it, to try to get these, these people on, the leaders of the neighborhoods on path to um, understanding what their long range goal is. We've developed what we're calling a plan on a page. So it's a one or two page plan that really identifies um, what the demographics of the neighborhood are, what the incomes of the neighborhood are, uh, looks at their history and the vision, and then it d deals with any challenges and who's gonna be responsible for. So this is the idea of the neighborhood taking responsibility on taking on those initiatives, as well as if they've got initiatives that the city needs to uh, deal with, they can share those with us as well, and we can work together to accomplish the goals of their neighborhood. So the, go the goal is to have every neighborhood association that has an updated plan on a page, if you will, for their neighborhood to work on. Next slide. So looking into 2019, what are we hoping to accomplish? Basically a lot of the same, but um, we're calling it a second wave of, of the lighting improvements. So we're gonna work to uh, get the rest of the lights installed in the central city neighborhoods, continue to establish baselines for our four neighborhood associate, our four targeted neighborhood associations. Uh, there's a initiative with the Department of Public Works to hopefully develop a large item cleanup for neighborhood associations so we can deal with some of the larger trash that we deal with on a daily basis under nuisance and um, sanitation issues. Uh, expansion of the adopt a park into other neighborhoods. The city has a neighborhood grant opportunity, so we're gonna, we continue to help neighborhoods fund different activities within their neighborhood and then create two more neighborhood development plans. Under code enforcement, so we um, have had two part-time code enforcement officers for the last three or four years. Um, and really, I think where, where we're at is the fact that um, we've identified, a, we've taken care of a lot of the low-hanging fruit. Now the stuff that's left is a little bit more challenging and takes a little bit more education to get people to comply. So um, we like to say that in the extreme cases, they're considered neighborhood killers because they really bring down the whole morale and the whole, um, you know, the whole neighborhood as a whole. So, and and we're, if we, the, the concern we have is if we don't address these issues, that becomes the new standard for these neighborhoods and people don't call in and don't complain and they just kind of go on with their life and then that's the way it is. So as, you know, with all these un other initiatives, it doesn't only happen with the uh, building inspection or planning department. We have to work with partnership with the other departments and we greatly appreciate that. Next slide. So focusing efforts with neighbors and neighborhood associations has proven to be successful. Um, and we're at the point really now of spending a lot of time educating residents and property owners on the importance of keeping their properties up. So that's, you know, we may not, our numbers may be lower than a um, couple of years ago, but the ones, that, you know, now it's really about getting out there and making sure that this is sustaining itself so we don't have to continually be doing this. So that's kind of where we're at today. Um, these are just some real quick examples of stuff we see. This was some pr uh, property on uh, in t uh, January of 2018. So this is their porch in the front of their house. Um, next slide. This is hard to see, but this is a roof that has hardly any shingle, any rocks left on the shingles. You see these these are garages and garages is a is a challenge in alleys and you know areas that are densely platted. So we've targeted garages. Uh, parking on grass is another um, issue. Uh, city ordinance requires it to be cars to be parking on paved surfaces. Um, these are just some examples of houses that 
uh, are under construction or have received orders and that have complied with some new steps and handrails and guardrails and safety and all that kind of uh, good stuff. So the process real briefly is um, we survey the neighborhood, receive a complaint, do a neighborhood walk by survey, a notice is sent. Um, after the notice is sent, there's a timeline to comply. If they fail to comply, we issue citations. Um, and if they uh, ultimately default on those citations, it's in the hands of municipal court to handle and, and the city attorney's office to handle the prosecution piece of it. Our goal is not to be citing. Our goal is to get compliance, but we do get a number of people that just do not respond to us and um, there's no other there's no other means of trying to get their attention but issuing a citation. The challenge with that is that the, the citations are $681 per violation. So um, it adds up quick. Next slide. <clears throat> this is, this is uh, small, but what I would say is the red identifies the 2018 housing complaints that we've completed in uh, this year, and the blue is the 2018 nuisance. So it's not one particular neighborhood, although there's a stronger concentration in the areas of the neighborhoods we've targeted, um, but it's pretty uh, uniform across the entire city when you take this year's code orders and map them out in GIS to see where we've been. So that's all I have. I'm happy to ask, answer any questions. If not, um, more to come as we move into 2019.